All right, guys. Well, it is a lovely but little bit smoky day. You're in the collapse of everything back at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this smoky Friday afternoon, uh, August 16th, 2024. And uh, so I'm coming through the mainstream media looking at all of the ain't gonna happen happy horse shit to save the planet uh, out there in the mainstream media and in between all the AGHs I found a couple of ways people are enjoying it while they still can and I want to just to send out a big hand to all of those people who have figured out how to get out there and enjoy it while they still can, which is really the only advice. So we're going to look at two stories from the mainstream media. We're going to start with, we're going to start over in Cape Cod. I bought a beach house in Cape Cod for $395,000. It is about to fall into the ocean, but I am living my dream while well, I still can. Yes, David Moot had always fantasized about owning a beachfront retreat on Cape Cod, but never thought he could afford it until he stumbled upon a coastal gym listed for only, for only $395,000. At roughly half the median sales price in the area, according to recent estimates, the listing seemed too good to be true. And it was. The affordable slice of paradise will soon be swept away by the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, the charming, the charming three-bedroom, two-bath cottage a three-bedroom, two-bath cottage sits, well, now sits, a mere 25 feet from an eroding bluff with the tide line predicted to creep three feet closer each year. So, assuming no acceleration, uh, in eight years, his coastal gem that he just shelled out $400,000 for should fall into the ocean. So that is about a thousand dollars a week uh, to get out there and enjoy it while he still can. Uh, okay, within a decade the home could be lost to the waves, but moot Age 59, shrugged and took the plunge. Quote, Life is too short. Let's just see what happens. It is going to eventually fall into the ocean. And it may or may not be in my lifetime. Yes, but Mr. Moot, this is not a moot point. This is a uh, beginning of a trend. Moot's purchase is part of a growing trend in pricey oceanfront enclaves where risk-tolerant bargain hunters are scooping up dream properties at rock-bottom prices. On Nantucket, where the elite flock every summer, one seaside house assessed at $1.9 million dollars recently sold for a shocking $200,000. Quote, eventually the ocean will win, new owner Don Vaccaro resignedly told the local paper. This new breed of beach buyers is gambling on a climate future that is far from certain as rising sea levels and more powerful storms put billions of dollars, I would say trillions of dollars probably, worth of prime real estate in jeopardy. Uh, 
This is Dylan McNamara, oceanography professor, professor at the University of North Carolina. Quote, between 50 and 100 years from now, there are communities that will be underwater. It's just a matter of time before those property values go down. Yes. Uh, in Nantucket, where winter storms have been gnawing away at the coastline, some areas have lost more than 12 feet of shoreline per year. The devastation has left homeowners facing some tough choices. This is Shelley Lockwood, a real estate agent in Nantucket. The hard conversation to have is with the owners. They are losing millions of dollars and thought they were going to leave this for their grandchildren. Now their homes are worthless. Yes, some properties are in such danger that the National Park Service has started buying them up and tearing them down to prevent debris from littering the beaches. And let's now go down to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. A prime vacation spot has already seen six homes collapse into the sea since 2020. This is Eric Brohos, local real estate broker. Quote, they should have never been built, close quote. Yes, but even with the risk, demand for beachfront properties remains strong. Yes, but as insurance costs soar and lenders shy away from financing homes, that could soon be underwater. Property values are expected to tumble. Yes, warned Lockwood. If you want to buy a house, you're going to have to pay all cash and you cannot insure it. That is going to make the buyer pool that much smaller. But for now, Mr. Moody is happy, even if happiness comes with an expiration date and he's thinking about ways to make the most of his time in his home even toying with the idea of turning the three bedroom two bath cottage into a retreat for terminally ill patients there you go uh, you know what better place to make a retreat for terminally ill patients than a house sitting on a bluff getting ready to fall into the ocean. Yes, or opening the property up to day visitors so they can soak in the beauty too. Yes, quote, This is such a wonderful dream for me that has come true, and I would love to be able to share it. I would like people to enjoy it as much as I can. Close quote. And there you go. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you know, good for good for Mr. Moot. You, you know, this dude, he's getting out there and enjoying it while he still can. Uh, I, I, I think a, a big round of applause for Mr. Moot. Uh, enjoying it while he still can before his $400,000 uh, cottage crashes into the ocean and I guess if there's any terminally ill patients enjoying it while they still can when it does you know well you know uh, they enjoyed it while they still could and that's really all that matters but we're going to go uh, from there down to the great state of Florida. We're going to go down to the Florida Keys, you know, which are going to be completely underwater. Uh, the, the Florida Keys will probably be the first 
you know, real chunk of real estate to go underwater. But between now and the time that they do, people can get out there and enjoy it on these goddamn little, I, I call them miniature airboats, these fucking uh, irritating jet skis. You know what I'm talking about? These goddamn snowmobiles that uh, on on water skis uh, that completely destroy uh, the the peace and quiet and tranquility uh, of people out there uh, wanting to enjoy it while they still can on canoes and kayaks or you know birds uh, or turtles or alligators wanting to enjoy it while they still can and then these motherfucking <coughs> if it's not a uh, airboats jet skis you, you, you know come tearing up the water these things are all over Florida D just ruining it for everybody else while these uh, these obnoxious jerks are out there and enjoying it while they still can. But at least there's going to be two jet skiers who, uh, who, who did. They were out there enjoying it while they still could. And now they're no longer enjoying it. But what the hell? You, you know, give them credit. Uh, here we go. Like a bomb exploding, witness details personal watercraft crashing in the Florida Keys. Um, there you go. This was th this was the last second uh, that uh, this clueless moron and his kid on the back uh, got to enjoy it in the Florida Keys while they still can. A witness eating lunch at a Florida Keys restaurant said the impact of the personal watercraft that killed a nine-year-old boy and his father early Tuesday night made, quote, a sound like a bomb exploding. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission identified the boy Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, in his clueless moron uh, father, 47-year Jose Dominguez, who police say was enjoying it while he could on his 2018 Yamaha jet ski. According to the report, the jet ski was traveling, quote, at a high rate of speed through a residential canal on Marathon Key shortly before 7 p.m., which is supposed to be an idle speed only zone when it smashed into a concrete seawall. Both father and son were ejected from the vessel. Yes, Jose was thrown about 20 feet onto the land after the impact. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there you go. Uh, the FCC is still investigating the crash, including why was Jose Dominguez driving his personal watercraft so fast through a residential canal that has a sharp turn in it before the seawall and there you go. So, uh, I guess Jose and his nine-year-old son were probably absolutely enjoying it while they still could. Probably right up to the le very last second uh, of their lives. And uh, again, like uh, Mr. Moot 
and the house full of uh, terminally ill patients, and good on them for getting out there and enjoying it while they still can, or I guess could. But uh, I gotta wrap this up, and uh, I will come back this evening with my ain't gonna happen roundup rant here at Collapse Chronicles. But right now, uh, I need to get out there and get a big homegrown tomato out of my garden and get out there and enjoy a BLT while I still can. Catch you for the ain't gonna happen roundup rant down the road. Bye guys.